from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley at Big Data SV. It's Big Data Week here in Silicon Valley in San Jose. Uh, for Strata Hadoop, Big Data, SV, and theCUBE. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, with my co-host, Peter Burris, Head of Research at Wikibon Silicon Angle Media. Our next guest is Wei Wang, Senior Director of Global Marketing at Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Thank you. So the data platform is the, is, the, is the battleground right now in the industry, but it's where the customers are seeing the most value because it's really where the action is in terms of people building real solutions on. And the, and the doers out there and the digital builders are looking at the platforms of data mm -hmm. and want the most enabling, most um, reliable, but yet supported platforms because they have apps to run on it. Yep. This has been a big part of the Hadoop ecosystem, but it's expanding beyond Hadoop now. Mm -hmm. So I want to get your thoughts on uh, Hortonworks current data platform. You guys are really looking at the IoT thing, which we talked about in New York. How's that connected to other data? What's the update on the platform side from Hortonworks? Yeah, it's a great question, actually. Um, so um, as you guys know, the data used to actually double in a century. Now it doubles a couple of years. So with the leading industry analysts exactly expecting, the data is going to expand it to 44 zettabytes. And we, you and I had a conversation back in New York uh, at Strata last time, talk about the acquisition we just had right on Yara. We, we truly are breaking into the field of, we call it data in motion. So um, looking at the data that is at a flight and with the tools that we have 100% open source of the Apache NiFi project. So now, yes, you're right. Um, Hortonworks has been known to offer Hadoop distribution. We offer our uh, Hortonworks data platform for managing data. We call it data at rest, basically the historical insights. Now we, with the new uh, members of our, our, uh, our product offering, we, we now offer not only just data at rest, but data in motion. So look at it, think about the 44 zettabytes of data and Hold on, let's, let's make sure we get the camera on this. So you have a chart here. So yeah. we're going to take you, you're going to take us through an example of yeah. some of the data in motion. So get yeah. a shot on that. Okay, good. Yeah, sounds good. So we, we talk about it. The data really has go exponentially to 44 zettabytes by the end of the decade. That's the prediction. Um, the, I, that truly the traditional platforms, as you have mentioned, the platforms that the corporations that are familiar with, it's just not capable of uh, to, the, to scale up to the platform or to the usage of that today. So for, for, for that matter, um, the race is truly on, right? Now all the corporations are now thinking about what is the next platform they can get themselves deployed and get up and running to provide the actionable intelligence that allows them to um, win the next generation of customers, to be able to provide the next generation of services and to be able to empower themselves for new efficiencies. So we look at the data here is truly, we look at it, the data flyby of the data, emotion data could be on your Fitbit, on your iPhone, of the sensor data, of an oil rig. Now it's truly almost 50% of data is now in almost we call data at flight, data in motion, right? To, and the 50% is the data at rest. So the, the data scientists really are being challenged to find a point solutions that is custom built to just to give them some insights for that. So you get a lot of, I love the motion, first of all. So motion, just give, let's just double, double click on that one thing. Mm -hmm. So data in flight and data in motion are the same thing or part of the same in, thing? In, yeah, we're, we're, we're calling it as a data in motion. Because data at rest is essentially systems of record. You've got to store it somewhere in whatever format they might be interested mm -hmm. in. Doing Structured that. databases, right? Uh, database tables we're familiar with. So you have a little box around the legacy big data platform. So that's basically saying, okay, if you have legacy, you could probably use that. Mm -hmm. Is that what you guys suggest? Absolutely. We're, we're saying that you, you're, you're going to be slightly at a disadvantage because you, you are looking at only the data at rest, right? You're, you, you, you probably are a pioneer a couple, five, six years ago and really go to, uh, have your jump with your both feet into the big data world. You, you have some kind of a big data platform and a new platform you're using. But at the same time now, the, the world truly has moved on. You have new challenges you have facing 
And how are you going to solve that? You know, I always say, you guys have words like data flow, which is a trademark term, Hortonworks data flow, data platform. And the thing, the, the joke is, just when you think you're complete, new data comes in. That's so right. The, the fast data, or we used to call, you know, data ocean, data lake, a lot of action going on, yeah. especially around IoT. So I want to get your thoughts on this. It's really a philosophical thing, and I want to find out where Hortonworks lands on this. Yeah. Some people believe that you should couple um, the data platform uh, with devices or systems, and some think you should decouple yeah. the data platform from devices and other subsystems. What's your thoughts on that? I truly think it's all connected, right? So that's, a, that's why we, we call it now a connected data platform. Um, connected data platform that have, have the data at rest and data in motion, right? Data at rest and data in motion. So um, I think that, for example, quickly finish up here so that I can show the chart. So connected data platform, right, it's, it's, our, mm. it's our offering. And we have data in motion, and we have offerings for data at rest. So let me, let me tell you why that's important that we need to have the same platform that, that actually connects the two openly. Um, I'm going to give you an example, right? Everybody knows about progressive insurance. Progressive insurance that actually offer its drivers a, a kind of opt-in snapshot devices that they can plug into their cars. And what it, what before they have the, the sensor can really gather the information, basically IoT information on the fly. That's the data in motion part, it's streaming in. But because they don't have a data at rest um, platform to allow them to analyze it, they can only gather 25% of the data that hosted in the traditional system, and they can it takes them five to seven days to analyze the whole data. So now you have a, actually a loop. You think about the data streaming in, you need to make some actionable intelligence immediately. We call it perishable insight, right? Are we going to do something about this in the next four, six hours, 24 hours? Then you move the data into a data at rest platform um, to do, do long-term analysis, to do predictive analysis. Then what's the insight? The insight you get is whether or not you want to give this driver um, a kind of a, a discount based on the driving behavior. Because in the system, data rest uh, system in Progressive holds actually 10 million driver miles data. So what comes out of it has to loop back in to the data emotion part. So what I think it should be a connected data platform that is, has a open, is completely open, that also that has the security and governance and operations for you. So in the picture, though, if, you, if I'm a customer and I say, okay, I love this idea, this data in motion is super strategic because mm -hmm. we have IoT and other things going on, whether it's mobile data or user data, whatever it could be, social data. Yeah. If I have a legacy set of storage or systems, that's not going to change what I do on data in motion. It's just kind of decoupled, if you will, from the platform work and connected. So mm -hmm. connected and being decoupled gives me freedom. Is that kind of what you're saying? So if I'm a customer, I can yeah, do that? Yeah, so what I, what I was trying to say uh, also, you're right, uh, definitely. And, and so also to emphasize that is, uh, is a continuous feedback loop. So what you get in data in motion can immediately feed into the data at rest system. And then what comes out of it, as, a, as a we use Spark and other tools now to do predictive analytics, the outcome of that can immediately feed back in to our data flow pl platform and actually give additional um, feedback to the, to the end system, right, um, to, to your Fit, Fitbit as well as your iPad or iPhone to give you some indications like, um, given our prediction, you got to slow down, you got you to gotta do something, you got to take an action right now. So it's a continuous loop. So we've learned a lot about how to utilize data in a variety of different ways and a variety of different technologies, and Hadoop extended that pretty dramatically. Mm -hmm. We've also discovered that there are limitations to what some of these technologies to do and how we have to complement them with new technologies like for data in motion. Are we also talking about new expertise centers? Are we talking about the same group of people utilizing these technologies to solve different classes of business problems? So um, I have to, uh, to be very frank, I think that's the both. That's how I met in, in trade shows and even at this show and other, our Hadoop Summit, is that they are the same type of people that who are now really are dig into the new technologies. They have to, right? That's their job. The, the, their, 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 um, their responsibilities has been expanded, that they need to learn what is data in motion, what is actually applies to the traditional system. So even the traditional DBAs now have new tricks at, their, at the sleeve that they can apply. At the same time, the, there's a new crop 
of brand new skill set that needs to be applied to um, the system that, that allows you to do never impossible before. So I think that I would say it's a combination. I've seen it at talking to people that it has both the traditional skill set and a brand new skill set. So your business model ties you intimately to your customers. Mm -hmm. Has to. Absolutely. Because your customers are also helping to extend the characteristics and the technologies of the platforms that you're actually then distributing. Uh, how do you see new folks being attracted into, or how, how will this data in motion attract new experts, new people into that community so that the community can accelerate how it solves problems even faster? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. I think that the community itself is, if I may say, there are two things. One is really tied into the use cases. You can think about the corporations that they, they are, in a sense, that right now, probably not five years ago, um, rec recruiting on younger folks on, uh, younger folks on basically new skill set for completely open source projects, right? They are doing that. So for that sake, that they are already bringing these people in into the community way well before, to be honest, they graduated from college. On the other, uh, uh, the other uh, time, uh, we have folks that who are traditional, you will say, almost doing only sensor data, only do have uh, IoT expertise or even cybersecurity uh, expertise. They feel that they are coming to uh, a show like this week and Hadoop Summit is to learn what is possible, what are the new use cases that enables them to do, and augment the skills that they have currently to make it a bigger, tight and secure uh, a community. They either dragging the people here to their community, or obviously they want to join themselves to a, a bigger and a more sophisticated community that we have. We we have some uh, crowd chat comments from Madhu, um, one of our Cube alumni in, in our community says we need to move from. Uh, conversations from data at rest and data in motion to the value for the customer. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to say, enterprise customers want insights and extract actionable intelligence to make decisions on the business front and leverage with data and machine learning to achieve this. So one of the things that you guys have in your platform is this notion of the data platform and then mm -hmm. the data flow yeah. and then the intersection is the actionable insights. Actionable Can insights. you talk about that piece? Because that's where the action, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. And what's the impact the customers want on the app side? So I think that uh, we, we feel like um, we call it data, data in motion, data at rest that enables modern data applications, right? The modern data applications is one that I, I mentioned that you, you, it's, it's either custom built or off the shelf that allows you to truly, we call it almost like a little assembly line. You assemble it and then make sure that your connected data platform allows you to pick and choose the functionality you need. Absolutely, this, uh, this chat is correct that uh, connected data platform, or, uh, or forget of talking about what is data in motion and data at rest. It's truly, as I mentioned before, what are the specific use cases? Some of the use cases could be completely on the data in motion side. I just have a, a variety of streaming data coming in. I need perishable insight in the next 20 minutes to an hour. Forget about the data at rest because that doesn't quite apply for me. I worry about that tonight when the data has been flowed into my data at rest problem. But right now, in order to make uh, new insights, actionable insights, I need, I need this. You mentioned perishable minutes. data, I like right. that term. So that's a term that you guys use as part of one of the use cases. Mm -hmm. That's the actionable insight. Yeah. It's something real time, something in the moment. Is that what you refer to about perishable? Yes, like a, for, like a Fitbit, like an iPhone. You're, you're, you're doing something, your heart rate is going too high, right? If you're streaming into the data, obviously into a data emotion system, you got to do something. Per it's perishable because that intelligence is not going to be applied to you or not going to be very uh, useful for you four hours from now. So to talk to Madhu, who's watching, uh, Madhu, just uh, if I can break this down, if I can put this package together, what we're saying here is the environment consists of data at rest and data in motion. Those are things that are happening, mm -hmm. those are external market forces in big data. Yeah. IoT and other applications is where the action is for the customer standpoint. Is the that, modern data that? applications, So yeah. that's the data application. Okay, so now the developers that are out there, mm -hmm. what does it mean for them, for the app so, builders? So at least the, the way our philosophy is, we are going to provide, if within, within the technology we have in, provide the most comprehensive, most open um, tool set for them to use, right? Um, just like we, we talk about our Hortonworks data platform, everything we offer is 100% open source. Even with the data in motion on Apache NiFi, Hortonworks Dataflow, again, it's 100% open source. We're, what we're, our philosophy truly is we're going to give the developers 
all the tools that is out there that is open and useful. So I want to come back to this notion of data in motion, data at risk, and the question that came in from the crowd chat. It was a great question. Because uh, you're right, perishable data, for me, when I'm exercising, which is so very frequent, <laughs> um, what Fitbit is telling me right now is relevant to me right now, and it may not be relevant to me in two hours. Yeah. But if I have a health event, yep. then that data that was perishable a second ago may, in fact, become extremely relevant because the context has changed. Yes. So how do we ensure that what we call perishable uh, before uh, mm -hmm. we understand the role of the data mm -hmm. can then also be employed in a new context mm -hmm. if we have to work with a physician or a healthcare provider to address a problem that emerged a couple of hours later after I exercised. Yeah, so that's precisely um, when you guys ask me the question, which one should I lean into? That's why it's an integrated system, it's connected right. data platform, right? We gather the data from you, give you indications of what your action should be in the next couple minutes, then the data automatically is flowing in through data flow or Hortonworks data flow as a product into our data at rest platform. And then so you can dig back in um, anytime you want. Same thing with any kind of events, trigger events, oil rig, fire, there is a fire, right? It wasn't a fire five seconds ago, so the data that was not relevant for us 10, 15 seconds ago, now it's become really relevant. So we go back in, look at the data it's already collected, back to the data center, and do some analysis and see what's happening. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. Uh, just one last thought on this, is that the idea ultimately is that the data will persist, but the context will change. Mm -hmm. How the data gets employed as a consequence of how different people come together to do different things together will be a, a very fluid thing, but we have to make sure that the data is moving to that moment or that context and in a way that uh, allows us to apply multiple contexts or utilize multiple contexts on that data. Absolutely. Hortonworks has had a secondary offering recently. Um, it's a company that has been explosively growing, certainly in the post Cloud Era um, era. Cloud Era was a solo pilot in the beginning. Hortonworks came on, uh, fast follower. But it was really a two-horse race between uh, Hortonworks and Cloudera. So much has changed, and a lot of people have been speculating about the whole business model of Hadoop. But now that you guys have this connected platform, it goes well beyond Hadoop at this point. Yep. We're seeing that. I want to get your thoughts on that. Because I think that, I want, if you can share uh, that narrative with the customers that are watching, your customers that are watching our Cube community, because it's really going beyond Hadoop. Hadoop is one aspect of it. You guys are obviously a big player in that. But this notion of having a connected platform is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, um, thank you for, for the question. We are, you're right, our customer, we are a public company, so all the things I say here is probably you can find it on our filings. We have over 800 customers now as of uh, the end of 2015. Our growth rate is phenomenal. We continue to really uh, expand ourselves into a variety of industries. Um, so absolutely for our customers um, that who are want to do what is impossible or never possible before, right? The things I talk about progressive, for them before was never possible. Now it's, how did I live without it? How, could, how did I actually live without the sensor, you know, the, the sensor data that I, for my drivers to have usage-based insurance? I, I couldn't imagine before, but now I can't live without it. So for, my, for the customers out there, we continue to go and expand. We're going to expand. We already talk about our uh, cybersecurity initiative. initiative. We, we're, we're, we actually are uh, pioneering the initiative in Metro. So Turn in, turn in, we're going to continue to expand our, our, um, our product or off solution offerings, but uh, the philosophy has not changed, right? We're open, we are, uh, we're completely open, and we are all for the community, and we're very proud, just like Sean Colony said. Yep. Well, you guys are uh, great to work with, and we're looking forward to Dublin on April 14th. The Cube will be there. We're flying to Ireland to have a few pints of Guinness, which is a touristy thing to do, but hopefully we have some good beer there. But with some great Hadoop conversations, can you share with any of the big announcements coming up at Hadoop Summit? Only kidding, I'm sure you're not going to say. No, what? I can't share anything that uh, is, we are going to have a very big announcement at uh, Hadoop Summit in Dublin. Um, yes, t please turn in. I would definitely buy you a beer uh, in Dublin, but uh, no, I can't share anything. It, it uh, will be yeah. in an Irish accent, though. <laughs> coming up later today, we have a lot of great guests. We've got CEOs, we've got entrepreneurs, we've got startups, we've got some public companies. Again, here live in Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise at Big Data Week. Go to hashtag Big Data SV, hashtag Big Data Week, and go to crowdchat.net slash Strata Hadoop. We are here for our Big Data SV in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. This is theCUBE. We'll be back with more after this short break.